Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and feeling creative. This video will answer many questions that I seem to be getting about how to save multis when you've created them. So let's get started. I've set up a multi in advance which sounds sort of like this. Now, I want to save this multi for a future use, and I usually work with Omnisphere in the standalone mode to avoid distractions so I can focus on just creating sounds rather than twiddling with other effects, etc. This is a great way to spark your creativity, especially if you're feeling a bit stuck and uninspired. To save the multi, all you need to do is click on the utility up here, and they say save multi. And then you will get this folder screen. And I'm on a Mac, but there's, you get sort of like a similar view uh, on Windows. So you must save in the default folder. Uh, so I go to my category and in here, this is where your multi will save. This, when you put um, go into this view, you can actually make a folder for sort of easy categorization. So for instance, I want to call this, uh, let's call it new project. Let's be original. Why not? New project. If I can spell, that would even help better. New project. So I've created a folder inside here. I can save to this, but it won't show in this view here at all. But more of that later because it will be helpful. And after clicking save, so what I want to do is so first of all, I need to actually call this something. So let's say this great orb pad and I go save. Now we get this screen. So at first, this tagging screen seems a little sort of like overwhelming, but it's quite straightforward once you explore it. This red bar here, this one that I can move up and down, this sort of uh, uh, sets the required attributes and is optional. Uh, and it's, but it's handy sort of like a way of making sure you don't forget to tag your multi correctly. So like put the main things in. So if I move that to the top, that means none of this is going to be default. If I move this down, <clears throat> then I can have author, genre and type. So when I save another multi, I must fill in these categories. Otherwise, it won't save. So what we're going to do is just click on these arrows here. And this gives you a list of attribute types that you can actually choose. So I've cho chosen author for the first slot, genre for the second slot, and uh, <clears throat> type for the third slot. And I move the red bar so that whenever I save another multi, I have to fill in these attributes and then I can save it. And this is a great way for people to sort of like found, find your sounds and your multis if you, if you distribute them or if you want to find your own multis later. So what we're going to do is click on the author bit and this gives you a list of creators of multis, basically. If you're not listed, we can sort that later, but I'm, I'm already listed in this because I have released a number of patch libraries from the sphere, which you can actually pick up from adrianearnshorter.com. So that's a nice little advert. There's about four patch libraries up there, uh, all with different takes and the sort of ambient electronica scene. As I was saying, if you're not listed in this particular category is here. All you need to do is click this little plus button and then you can type your name in up here, press enter, and you will appear in this list. And you will join sort of the list of Omnisphere uh, sound creators. And you can do the same for genre. You can, if you can't find the genre in there that you want, you can click assign because it's like, so let's say electronica isn't in there. So let's call, let's make a, um, another genre, a lec Tron there we go and that comes in and as soon as I press enter it also appears in the genre and what I want to do is because it's a bit ambient as well I'll say it's ambient it's electronic yeah it can feel it can be in film and film score sci-fi possibly yeah and we'll call it underscore as well because it can sit behind things going on there this type of sound as somebody's talking so yeah underscore will be fine we then go to type and say right what do we want to call it well we know it's a pad of some kind so we say uh 
you know, there's some evolving motion going on. It's layered. Um, let's see if there's anything else on here. Synth pad, yeah, that'll do. And I think that will probably be okay. Well, it's stacked as well because it's got more than one. So I can say stacked and stack. There we go. So we've done all that. That's fine. For keywords, you need to stick in some relevant terms in here for what people are going to search for. So you like sequence, arpeggiation, pad, movement. Think of it like the YouTube tagging system when you upload a video. And it's what somebody would actually put in the search term to, to actually find your patch. So I'm going to put in pad, pads, uh, ambient, electronica, motion. Sorry for the mic knock there. Motion, and we'll leave it at that. Now, the web link, this is a useful feature if you distribute your own patches, etc. So it's people know where to find you, really. Uh, so you can put anything in there. I'm just going to put my website in, adrianearnshaw.com. And in the notes section here, uh, you can add details about how to use the multi, you know, sort of like tips on how to actually use it. Because I like to sort of give a bit of information about what's inspired the patch. Then I'll just say something like um, the mod wheel does X, Y, Z, or there's a unique feature like the LFO affects the cutoff and resonance. This sort of helps the user understand and perform with the sound and get the most out of it. So I'm just going to say, because uh, uh, Orb makes the pad, well, the pads, because there's more than one, Evolve E, I can't even spell now, evolve over time. Now let's hear what the cutoff does. Uh, cutoff mod wheel, even. Well, mod wheel doesn't do anything because both of these patches are orb and you don't really want your mod wheel working at the same time as the orb because all crazy manner of things can happen. So we'll just leave it at that for now. And all I need to do now is press save. And there we go, we have saved my multi, and it appears down here. Great ore pad. Just to load it, and it says complete, and we, we're back to where we were. Now, remember that folder view I mentioned earlier, sort of that you can actually put your patches in the My Category folder, but then make another folder and call it something else. Now, to get to this, all you need to do is click on your multi name at the top. And we've got three different um, viewpoints here. We've got attributes, file directory, and sound match. Now I want to go into file directory. And what I want to do, I need to find my category, new project, and there we go. That's my multi. So this is a great way of so organizing your multis in the way you want them to be organized. And I hope this video has clarified how to save multis within Omnisphere. If you have more questions about Omnisphere, leave a comment below and I will try my best to answer them. And stay creative, stay sonic, and I will see you in the next one.